Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Ainsworth, and we're going to get into a little project here in Chapter 1 in Financial Algebra and how to, how to set up an Excel spreadsheet using the Google Sheets online to find the standard deviation uh, using Excel okay, or Google Sheets, which is a pretty much an offshoot of the program called Excel. So how do you do that? And we did it the other day uh, in Desmos. I'll just do a quick uh, tour of Desmos because we did that. So let me bring up the uh, graph here. We did that project in Desmos. And we learned how to program in Desmos all the formulas to generate all the statistics uh, to find the standard deviation in Desmos. And we did it formula based. We didn't calculate it you know, step by step by hand, but we learned how to program uh, the table you know, given a set of values here to find the standard deviation. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing and we should get the same results. So what you need to do before we get started here is to take out your project that we did the other day. So I'm going to pull this up here too. This is what we developed on our project when we did it in Desmos. I want to compare all the results in, in Excel or the Google Sheet with all these results that we came up with in Desmos. And this was our this was the product of all our work the other day. And so what we want to do is figure that out, how to do this on Google Sheets. And it's actually quite simple. So pause and play and go at your own speed. You can always hit the rewind button if you need to. Uh, and if you need this document right here, the Google Sheet here, just go to my website in Canvas and uh, click on the link and you can have this uh, Google Sheet that I'm using right here and then edit it yourself. So here we go. We're going to give these shoe sizes here and there are 30 values. Uh, we need to find the sum and then the average or the mean and then all these other things here too. So the first thing we do is we want to find the sum. And when you do this, uh, you start off by developing formulas. Everything is formula based. We never w round the numbers. We never enter the numbers in as we generate them. We design the spreadsheet. It's called a spreadsheet using formulas. So every formula starts off with an equal sign. And what we want to do is add up the column of data points, right? So you type in sum, in parentheses. And there's two ways to tell uh, the Google Sheet, or uh, Excel in this case, uh, where the data is. And so this cell right up here is in column B, row 3. So we call that B3. Every, every cell is denoted by a column letter and a row number. So this one's in B3. So we want to sum up all the ones from B3 all the way to uh, B32, it looks like, okay? And so what you do, there's two ways to do it. Let me start over here. So you, one way to do is click and drag, and you can highlight the cells that you want to sum up, okay, add up or sum up, same thing. And you simply highlight them and then hit the Enter button, and you can get the sum that way. And then up here, if you click back on the value, we have a sum of 767.6. You'll see that the formula is up here at the very top of the screen. I highlighted it right there. And the formula is equal sum, and then parentheses, B3, semicolon, B32. So going back to what we just did here, I'm just going to delete this and go back and enter it again. You start, always start off with an equal sign, and then if you're summing something up, you just use the word sum. That's the command in, in Excel. And then you realize what you're summing. Now you're summing the, the numbers from B3 all the way to this last one here, which is B32. Okay, right there, B32. So what you could do is you could just type it in. So I'm just going to type in B3. So B3, and then you go semicolon. So you got to use shift button right there to B32. And then hit the enter button. And you'll notice that we get the same sum. So some people prefer typing. And look at the top of the screen. The formula is up top. And some people just uh, do what I do, and we just highlight and click and drag and highlight the cells. Okay. Now the oh, we got it. once we get the sum, you want to calculate the mean, and the, the mean is nothing more than uh, the average. And you always take the sum divided by how many data points you have. In this case, we have 30 data points. Okay, so I'm going to type in 30 here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here where I want the mean. I'm going to type in equals. And there's two ways to do this, okay? So one way is to take your sum, which is right above it, in B34, all right? And then divide it by 30. So slash, use a slash on your keyboard, divide it by 30, and then hit enter. 
The other way to do it is simply type in the word average. And now it doesn't use the word mean as a command in Excel. It uses the word average for the word mean. So you average, and then you want to take the average of the data, which is in B3, semicolon, uh, B32. Okay, click enter, and notice it's the same value. All right, so you, you can get the, the average of the mean two different ways. You can take the sum divided by 30, or you can simply type in average of the data points, which is probably the easiest way to do it. All right, the next one, what we need to do is calculate the deviation sum, but to get the deviation sum, we need the deviations, which is the distance from each point uh, to the mean. Now, sometimes uh, the deviation is negative if it's less than the mean, and sometimes it's positive. Okay, so we're going to get positive and negative numbers here in a minute. But you're going to start off with the equal sign, and then notice here in the formula here, it's x minus x bar, which is x minus the mean. Now, x represents the data points in column B. And notice that the data points change, change as you go down, okay? So they, they vary, all right? But the mean doesn't change, okay? It's constant. It's down here in, it's in cell uh, B32, okay? No, excuse me, B34. And it does not change. It's going to stay 767.6 uh, throughout this entire project. So you got to be careful with that. So some things change and some things stay constant. And when something stays constant, you got to account for that. So let me explain what I mean. So I'm going to type in equal here. And then I'm going to, I need to type in the formula for x minus the mean. So x is to the left in B3. So I click on B3, or I can type B3, either one. And I want to subtract the mean. So I go minus, right, the mean. Now the mean is in, down here in, uh, it's located in B36. So I click on B36 and let's we'll select enter, and we'll take a look at the value. So it's B3 minus B36. Now this is fine for the first value here, but if I copy this formula down, I'm not gonna get the correct results throughout the column because I want the mean to stay constant as X varies, because X is first, you know, it's 23.8, and then 25.1, 25.9, and something. So whenever you uh, write a formula here. If something stays constant, what you do is you go up in the formula here at the very top and you put a dollar sign between the letter and the, the column letter and the number itself. So I'm going to insert a dollar sign in there. So notice that uh, it's B3 minus B and then dollar sign 36. This will keep the mean constant and it won't let it change. Now I'm going to hit enter. You'll notice that the value doesn't change. Okay, B3 minus B36 is still negative uh, 1.786 repeating. And now to copy a formula down, and this is the beautiful part about spreadsheets, and, and the most powerful part about spreadsheets is that once you design a formula, you copy it all the way through the column, and it applies the same formula to every single data value. So to do that, you got to click on this little lower right-hand corner, uh, that little square-looking thing, and the cursor goes from arrow to to uh, looks like crosshairs or the plus sign. And what you do is you're going to grab it with uh, your cursor. I'm going to click and drag all the way down. Oops, see, there you go. And I just applied it to all the different data values all the way in the entire column. So I'm clicking and dragging down, and I stop at the last cell in row 32. And notice that it applied the formula to every single data value. So what it's doing is taking the data value in B3 subtracting the mean, which is in B, it's in B36. But again, I entered the plus, uh, the dollar sign in there to keep the mean constant. Now, the most common mistake is people forget about that important thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a mistake here. And this is what happens when you don't do it correctly. So uh, just to prove my point here. So I'm going to take out the dollar sign. I'm going to delete it. And then... I'm going to copy this formula down, and you're going to see that we're going to get a totally different set of numbers. Okay, so see what happens? These are all, the, from the third one on, they're all incorrect. Okay, if you compare it to your project that we did before, I'm talking about this project here. Com I don't have the values in the third column here, but you do. Uh, you'll see that these values are not the same. Okay, and so, oh, you know, I can show you on Desmos. It's right here. So I'm talking about these values right here in the table. Okay, they're not the same as this. Look at the third column right here. This is our Desmos work right here on the on this screen. Okay, so remember, okay, I'm gonna go back 
Okay, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to put a dollar sign between the B and the 36. And I'm spending time on this because people, that they forget the important part is about programming. And if you don't program it correctly, it's not going to run correctly. And that goes for any kind of programming too, by the way. So I'm going to copy this down all the way for the entire column. All right, let it go. And then it just it calculates everything for you. And that's the power of a spreadsheet. To do all that step by step uh, would take a while. Okay. And that's what everybody tried to do in the beginning on Desmos, and, and it was uh, very difficult. So I showed you guys how to develop formulas to do the same thing. So you let the spreadsheet do the work, not you. On the next one here, we've got to take the absolute value of our deviation, and that's easy to do. Okay, we type in equals, ABS stands for absolute value. You should make a note of that, okay, absolute value, ABS. And then I want to take the absolute value of, of C3, the, the term or the data right to the left of it in column C, and you just select enter, and notice that negative 1.86 repeating becomes positive, and because you guys know that an absolute value of a negative is a positive, because distance is always positive. And then what you do is you just apply the formula all the way down, okay? And then boom, it changes all your negatives to positives. Okay, you can just see that. You can see that right here uh, in the two that I'm highlighting, okay? And so that's pretty simple. And then the third one here, you gotta you gotta square the deviation. So type in equals and then parentheses. And then of course come over here to C3 or just type in C3. Close off the parentheses. And then on your keyboard, you're gonna use the caret, which is shift six. So use the caret for the exponent, type in two. So it's taking it to the second power. That's how you take something to the second power, hit enter, and it squares the deviation for you. So negative one point eight. Uh, excuse me, negative 1.786 repeating becomes 3.192, um, uh, continuing. So you want to copy this formula all the way down. So grab the lower right-hand corner, click and drag all the way down to the bottom, or you can type in a formula if you will. And you know, I take that back, just copy it all the way down. You'll notice that it squares all the numbers. Okay, so these are the squares of the deviations. And notice they're all positive because you, whatever you square is positive. So let's go down here and let's finish up. All right, so now let's get the deviation sum. Now I talked about in class, and let's go to our Desmos project here. Let's see. The deviation sum. So it's right. Yeah, so this is a deviation sum right here, the row four. And notice it's zero right here. I talked about how how and why it's equal to zero, and it should be equal to zero here. So whatever we get when we add up these all these numbers in through here, I'm talking about all of these. When we add up all these numbers here, we better get zero. Okay, so let's add them up. All right, so what we do is we start off with an equal sign, type in sum. Okay, now we're in column C. So it's going to be C3 to C32. So let's go up to the top. Notice the first data values in C3. So I'm going to just click and drag and highlight those values. I'm, I like to click and drag personally, but you can type it in. And notice it's, it says right there, C3 semicolon C32, and then hit the enter button. And boom, you get zero. Okay, this, The deviation sum is always equal to zero. Always. And then you the mean deviation... Uh, well, that's just 0 divided by 30, so that better be 0 too. So equals, okay, the cell above it, which is in C34, all right, divided by 30, because there's 30 data values, right? That's why that's why you see the 130th there, is because you've got to divide it by 30. And 0 divided by 30 better be 0, and it is. All right, let's go to the absolute deviation sum. That's the sum of all these data values above here. So again, for any sum, just type in the word sum, equal sum, that is, parentheses. Make sure you put the parentheses there. A lot of, that's another mistake people make is they, they forget the parentheses and they, they don't get the right values. And this is going to be D3 to D32. So D3 is up top. Go ahead and go all the way down to the bottom of the column. As I did on the earlier one here, hit the enter button and you get 43.8. All right, the mean deviation is whatever, you know, you just got to divide it by 30 because we have 30 data values. So this is going to be equal to, all right, the value that we had just now, D in D34, divided by 30. So D, D34 divided by 30, and you should get 1.46. Uh, 
And then finally here, we're going to sum up all the, the deviations. So again, sigma means sum. So anytime you see a sigma, that's a sum, guys. And you sum all the square deviations. So you're going to come up to the top, and now we're in column E. So it's going to be E3 to E32. Uh, so start off at the top, click and drag to the bottom, select Enter, and you should get 96.195 roughly. Okay? I say roughly because I just rounded it, even though it's a continuous decimal. The variance is simply the, the sum there of the square deviations divided by 30. So you just select equal, click on the one above, which is in E34, divided by 30. Because we have 30 data values. The standard, that's the variance, excuse me. Okay. And then, uh, that's the variance. And then the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So this one's a simple one. Just type in equals. Now, in squ uh, the square root function in Excel is SQRT in parentheses. And then that stands for square root, which hopefully makes sense. All right, and then you click on the cell above, and then you hit enter. And it should give out 1.79, which, by the way, is what we calculated earlier. So in the, the other project here on Desmos, our data values was in Y1. So if we calculate the standard deviation using Desmos, we'll just do it real quick. Uh, let's calculate the standard deviation population of Y1. Okay, and notice that it gives you the same value, 1.79. So whether you use Desmos or Excel, my friends, it is this gives you the same numbers if you if you know how to program it correctly. Now, what do you want to do if you're doing this at home, which some of you guys are? Uh, you want to print this to a PDF. So you go to File, you go to Download, and you go to Print D, uh, to PDF, and notice your project comes up right here. You want to export it. And what it's going to do, it's going to create a PDF and put it in your download folder. folder. So look at the bottom of the screen here, and you click on that arrow, and you say Show in Folder, and you can see it opens up the, this is my download folder on my computer. And notice it says Unit 1 Project Part 2 right there. And so from here, you know, you copy this, uh, put it in your Google Drive, and then you can upload it to Canvas from here. Pretty simple. You don't even have to print it to a piece of paper. You just have to do print it or export it as a PDF and then go right into Canvas. Okay, speaking of Canvas, so let's talk about that too. So you're going to put in three documents in Canvas for this project. So let's go to your module. It's in the first module here at the bottom after the test. So here's chapter one, uh, project part two. Oops, press the wrong button, sorry. Let me go back to that. Here we go. So chapter one, part two, and notice what it says right here. Uh, submit the following three documents in red, 20 points each. Save all your Desmos work and submit that as a PDF. I'm talking about all this all your Desmos work here and to do that you hit the share button you select print don't print it to a printer you save it as a PDF and then here's all your work that it generated in Desmos and you save it to your hard drive or your Google Drive and upload it to Canvas from there so to do that again this puts it right in my Google Drive so you can you know do that really easily and put that into Canvas and then of course your written work which kinda looks like this you scan this using Adobe Scan and put that in there too. So there are three things that you want to. Good afternoon, we'll start. We'll Steve Maxey. Uh, Please so, dial sorry. 3000. Sorry about that. I'm working at school. And then uh, you again you you submit all three PDFs. There's 20 points each, total 60 points, and make sure that gets into Canvas. All right. And then hopefully I see you soon in the future in class. All right. So that's, that's basically it. If you have other questions on either Excel or Desmos, let me know. I'll be around at school. So take care. This is Mr. Ainsworth. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.